Prophet Maria Valtorta's message in the notebook, 1943, page 182, chapter, The Increase of Sin and Pride in Yeshua's Saving Efforts, written July 21st, 1943. Yeshua says, I have already told you that what is stated in the ancient books bears reference to the present. It is if a series of mirrors were to repeat a spectacle seen further back by bringing it ever forward. The world repeats itself in its errors and acts of repentance. With this difference, though, the errors have been increasingly perfected in the race's evolution towards so-called civilization, while the acts of repentance have become increasingly embryonic. Why? Because the world's passing from childhood to a greater maturity, the world's malice and pride have grown. Now you, at the culmination of the world's age, have also reached the culmination of malice and pride. Do you think, though, that you still have long, as long to live as you have lived? You are at the culmination, and that ought to mean you have just as long to live. But it shall not be so. The world's parabola descending towards the end will not be so long as the ascending one. It will be plunged into the end. Precisely malice and pride have made you plunge. Two weights drag you in the chasm of the end, so the tremendous judgment. Pride and malice, in addition to dragging you into the descending parabola, obfuscate your spirits to such a point that they make you increasingly unable to halt the descent by sincere repentance. But if you have proceeded like this, going backward in goodness and moving headlong towards evil, I, the Eternal, have remained immobile in my exact measure of good and evil. Since the day there was light, and with it the world began. What is good and what is evil has been established by the mind that does not err. And human strength, small human strength, cannot remove or corrode that eternal code written by the finger of God on unviolable pages which are not of this earth. The only change since the instant at which my will created the world of man lies in this. Before you had to govern and guide yourself by the tablets of law and the word of the prophets, afterwards you had me, word and redeemer, to explain the law to you, give you my instruction and my blood, bring you by my coming spirit who does not leave shadows, and then support you over the centuries with the sacraments and sacramentals. But what have you made of my coming? A new way to sin is that you will have to answer for. Shall we look together at the ancient pages where that explanation of the current hour are found? You have felt them like a goad, but I will show them to you better. What is promised to whoever observes the law? Prosperity, abundance, peace, power, health, and numerous descents, and the triumph over one's enemies. Since the Lord would be on the cutting edge of the swords of the servants against those who would like to raise their hands against the sons and daughters of the Most High. What is threatened for those who transgress it? Famine, indigence, wars, defeats, pestilences, abandonment of God's part, and the oppression of enemies by which the former children of the Most High will become like persecuted, frightened herds, destined to be massacred. You complain about the hour you are living through, but do you find it to be unjust? Does its severity seem too harsh to you? No. It is just and less harsh than you deserve. I have saved you and saved you again in a thousand ways. I have forgiven you and forgiven you again for seven thousand crimes twice over. I came precisely to give you life, love, and light. I, the light of the world, came into the midst of your darkness to bring you the word of the light and love. I no longer spoke amidst whirlwinds and fire through the mouth of the prophets. No, I came to you. I personally I broke my bread with you, shared my bed with you, sweat with you in labor, consumed myself when awaking you, died for you, dissipated every doubt concerning the law with my word, dissipated every doubt about the nature of my resurrection, and left you myself so that I would be your spiritual food, able to give you life, and you have given me death. I have given you the word, love, and the blood of God, and you have closed your ears to the word and your souls to love and have cursed my blood. I have replaced the ancient tabernacle where there were two stone tablets written by the prophet's finger and some mana with the new tabernacle in which there is the true bread come down from heaven in my heart where there is written a pact of love which you, not I, violate. You can no longer say we don't know what God is like. I took on flesh so that you would have a flesh to love since it was not enough for you and your dullness to love a spirit. Well then, what have you done? What have you done more and more? You've turned your backs on God, on his altar, on his person. You've not wanted God, the tree, and God, the true God. You've wanted gods. 
and your present gods are more opprobrious than the gods of the ancients of the fetishes of the idolaters. Yes, than the fetishes of the idolaters. In those that still lies hidden respect for the image of God, as their mentality and ignorance are able to conceive it. And in truth, in truth, I tell you that the natural idolaters will be judged much less, much less severely than you. Idolaters of, the, of malice sold to the worst idolatry, self-idolatry. Yes, you've created yourselves gods of flesh and corrupt flesh, and before them you've been capable of singing hasanas and bowing your heads and bending your backs, which you've been unable to bend before God. You have disdained, repudiated, derided, and broken my law. But like slaves and animals domesticated by the tamer, you've accepted and obeyed this deceitful law given by your corrupt men, perverted even more than you, whose destiny is such that it makes all heaven tremble with horror. Idolaters, pagans, sold to the flesh, money, power, and Satan, who is the master of these three accursed realms of flesh, money, and power. Why? Why, O oh people of mine, have you gone out of the kingdom I gave you? Why have you fled your king of perfection and love and preferred the chains and the barbarity of the kingdom of Satan and the prince of evil and death? Is this the way you pay back the Most High, who is your father and savior? And are you astonished if fire issues forth from earth and fire rains down from the sky to burn the ashes of the arrogant and betraying race that has denied God and bulk of Satan his ministries? No. Satan has no need to work to labor to gulp you down. I must labor to see about attracting you still since. If you have denied your origin, I remember that I am your father and savior. Until the final hour when you will be gathered together for the inexorable selection, I will not deny my unfortunate children, and I still try to save them. This punishment, oh Maria, this punishment is not undeserved. It is just, it is serious because your sins are most serious. But it is not meted out, no, out of wickedness by a God who is all goodness. Your God would give himself to spare you if, if he knew that this would benefit you. But he must, he must let you punish yourselves for your acts of madness, for your commerce with the beast. A thousand and ten thousand will be lost in every corner of the earth, but in the agony strangling you, someone will hear the voice of God resound and raise his face from darkness towards the light. That one person who returns will justify the scorch. Know this and consider what an obligation you have to conserve it. The price and the value of a soul is such that the treasures of earth do not suffice to buy it. The blood of God is needed. Yeshua's blood. My blood. Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom alaikum. Shalom. Peace be with you always.